Hey guys. A friend of mine called me and said uh, took his snowblower out of the shed for to get ready for the season and there was a big old puddle of oil underneath it and it's dripping from the belly pan. And uh, I'm not sure quite where that's leaking from. That and I believe reverse does not work very well. You have to kind of pull the way back on the lever in reverse. But I believe that's maybe, he believes that maybe just the adjustment right here because this broke and he replaced it and it wasn't the same ever since. So, I think I turn the camera on and we'll go look together and find out what the issue is. And uh, see what we can do about repairing it. It's all wet right down in there too. I'm gonna wipe that stick off and uh, just make sure that uh, we're not dealing with, sometimes the float uh, can have an issue in a carburetor and what it does is the fuel drains out of the tank, runs in through the carburetor, past the rings down to the oil and then the oil level comes way up and then causes a leak. So let me just double check. That's not going to be our problem. Let me see if I can set you up. You good? No, it's low on the stick. So first theory shot. All right, let me get her up in the air. We'll get some covers off of it, and we'll see what's going on. Let's get that belt cover off there. The cover's got some cracks in it. This machine's about 10, 10, 12 years old. Gotta go take that shoot out of our way. Get a better light. I would suspect that crankshaft seal right there. Yeah, that's between where the case meets. piece of tin in a way so it's a little hard to see. Kind of thinking that front seal it looks pretty wet. Right down below there. Hmm, but I'm not positive of that. I don't see anything on this side that It's a little bit of... I think we should probably take some of the hardware off the front, see if we can get this tin out of our way and get a better look. In worst case, we just kind of run it. But it, the thing is, that's got me a little confused is that you said it was sitting in the shed and then when like you moved it out of the way of the shed, there was a bunch of oil down there. So that would not be the crank seal because it has to be running and splashing for that to do that. Again, it's, let's get some of the stuff out of our way. It's got to come off anyway for uh, any kind of service, no matter which one it is, we have to dig that far, so let's do it. Let's take the belly pan off. You can kind of see where the oil has been collecting underneath it and dripping out those holes. But again, that theory doesn't help us much at all. So I'm not sure. I haven't looked this machine up, but I have a feeling you have to split this one 
and when you do that it allows slack to get the belts off so it's going to be these two bolts and then the two on the other side and you leave the bottom ones in and you can kind of pivot the machine in the middle and when you do that it makes play for the belts and a space for the belts to come off so let's see how well that plane comes out just figured I'd show this so I went to go and uh, just find out what size socket that was and confirm it and the hardware is not even tight I know we had it at a dealership at some point and they put a new belt on it last year. Let's go check the other two. Yeah, that one's loose. One of them's hand tight. Got a jack stand by the, the handle ready to catch you. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the rods all connected. I'm not sure if I need to pull them off yet. And I think I can leave those pulleys on. I'm not sure. So not sure as far as getting around that tin yet. That outer pulley is going to be too big to clear that. That's got a set of Allen wrenches on it. I don't know if it's going to get it to crack. They are going to put up a fight. Yeah. That's tight. Hope I don't have to use heat on it. Let's try a little impact, see if that'll uh a little penetrant down there and I give another shot. I got too caught up in that. I took the rest of that um, belt guide out of the way so we can get that tin forward and we'll look behind it. We don't see it's damp but it's not My point was there earlier, yeah, the oil level is probably only right to about right there, so it's below the crankshaft. And unless it was stored up on its bucket, it really shouldn't have a reason to be leaking. Well, I got the penetrant in there. Let me put the ratchet on it or a little 3 8 breaker bar and I'll try working them back and forth. Again, I'm trying to keep away from uh, uh, using heat because if this seal's not gone, you didn't, last thing you want to do is uh, introduce heat and uh, make it so it's gone, you know. I do have a feeling it's probably going to be the gasket on the bottom, though. 
we could probably put a wrench on those and see if they'll take a little. Yeah, so before I dig that hole, it's uh, causing that that we can get away with just saying okay a bolt backed out not the case all right so I'm back to playing with those a little bit I'll put the allen wrench on these two and this one uh, loosened right up no problem the two set screws on that one this guy forget it it's just not happening so we're gonna have to go for the old heat and beat let it burn off all the PB blaster and uh, sometimes they have Loctite on them and you gotta put heat on them to get the Loctite on them, but that's not, I don't think that's the case on this. Just old age. Last thing I want to do too is distort that pulley at all. There it goes. One of them anyway. Not saying the pulley's gonna come off the shaft at all. That's a whole nother game by itself. But uh, at least we got the set screws out. So it's like a screwdriver and stuck in between. Of course, that's right. Prying and trying to see if we can get this front pulley to move, and it's not gonna happen. All it did is push the, the rear pulley backwards. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is take a wire wheel and we're gonna go in here. We're just gonna clean up all the rust that's on here because it has to get through here. It has to get past this anyway before it can kind of come off and all that is going to inhibit it and I may even just take it and tap it back some first kind of you know clean the path that it needs to go and then try going forward with it and uh, you know at some point we have to get a puller on there but sometimes the puller is uh, going to tweak the, the wall of it it's kind of hard to kind of grab all the way behind and get to the point where it's a uh, nice and solid meat but first things first let's get that front cleaned up Shall we? tapping it back that way so I took some uh, PB I took the uh, set screws out then shot some PB blaster both sides and then through the where the holes are and we'll see if we can kind of get that sucker to go 
Tap backwards first. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind this a little bit better. I just don't wanna be hitting on this part of the lip because if I do, it's gonna to start distorting this front wall. And once that happens, I'll pull these done. Hey, you might as well stay on, right? We're kicking over. So our next option again is heat. And the idea of the heat is again to heat this up and hope, hopefully you can expand enough where it releases off of it. That's the plan anyway. So I was able to uh, go through my puller cord and come up with a combination. I think that'll work that we can kind of grab it from behind it without trying to grab it from the lip. Let's see how this does for us. Or it could slip right off. I need something to jam in there. Yeah, that was never going to go. It's gonna need both. You need pressure and heat. Sometimes you gotta watch out too. Uh, set screws you can have a set screw, and then there's another set screw in behind that. That'll really kind of get you. Not the case here, but uh, I've run into that before. I made that mistake. Let me uh, get some heat going. Battery crapped out at some point. I looked over. You guys were all closed. You got bored. I know. Remember, grab that with your hands while it's nice and hot. That wasn't so bad, now was it? <laughs> I, I get the inner one. Judging by that rust, that wasn't going to come off pretty much any other way, now was it? So I'm going to take a wire wheel, I'm going to clean up that face there and uh, make a place for the other one to come off. I'll fight us so much. Let's see how the little one wants to play. Not as well as I thought. I'm gonna set that puller up, do the same thing I did on the other one, just so I don't damage the pulley. Once all that stuff's off of there and the key is out of there, I should be able to uh, emery that shaft up and get it uh, back in operating condition again. So those are off. And uh, just did the same thing I did on the first one. So I think what I wanna do now is wash the motor down pretty good. Sorry, engine. I know some of you get picky there. And uh, we'll clean off the crap that's on it. And we'll let it run for a little bit and see if we can kind of see any seepage of sorts.
and make our decision from there. I'll fold it back up, I'll put the couple of bolts in it and uh, we'll just let it run, let it get hot and see what happens. Actually, you probably got to put a little bit of oil on it too. I think it's actually a little low on the stick. So I cleaned up that machine out there and uh, I'm going to let it run for a while and we'll see if we start seeing any oil drips from it. I just started it. I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee and we'll let that run a little bit and we'll check on it and see if we can see where our issue is. Well, I was trying to get in there with a mirror to go show you, but I can't do it. So you can see it's wet right here. When I look up inside the hole, it looks like it's dripping right from the bolt location. You know, here's the bolts here. Well, there's one right here. And I believe that's where it's dripping from. So I am going to pull that bolt out and um, probably use some right stuff. It's a gasket sealer, gasket maker. That's uh, I'm growing pretty fond of and we'll kind of fill the hole with that. I have a feeling that on the inside, this is where, you know, the, on the other end, on, on this side, on the inside where it's sealing, there's probably uh, a tear in the gasket between the hole and the bolt, and it's seeping right through, and then there's probably a lock washer on the end of it. It's probably dripping right out of the end of the lock washer. So I'm gonna go take care of that. Well, there's the bolt out of there. I cleaned it up, and then I goobered it up with um, the right stuff. Little gasket maker. There is no uh, washer on there, so it wasn't like it was leaking around a split washer, but it was definitely leaking around the bolt. And who's to say the casing, the aluminum casing around it doesn't have a scratch in it or something causing it to uh, you know, have a path for it to leak out. So I figure if I goober up the bolt enough and we put that in there, it will fill any void. I still have to uh, uh, clean the, uh, the machine real good, get in there with some carb cleaner, compressed air, and blow out any crap that I can. And I'm gonna feed that sucker in. Uh, probably just kind of run it in so it's like almost finger tight, let it set up for a half hour, and then I'm going to run it in the rest of the way uh, once it kind of cures a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a preload. You know, let it harden up a little bit, get a little spongy. So uh, let me get take care of that. So again, it's uh, been about eh, 20 minutes or so that uh, since I put that in there, and then I just went and I snugged up. Probably took about another complete turn. And again, that's just so that the material around the screw gets a, a little bit of chance to harden up before you tighten it down so now you when you tighten it down it kind of gives kind of packs the hole it, it's probably the best way to say it yeah keep your jokes <laughs> anyway so i'm going to shove this back outside we're going to let it run for a while make sure we don't see any more kind of drippies happening and if so we'll start reassembling I pretty much put everything back together. Of course, it went back together much easier than when it came apart because everything was nice and uh, cleaned up inside there. So, uh, reassembled all that and kind of, yeah, I didn't go crazy, but you know, wiped down all the, all the heebie-jeebies that were on the inside. There was a lot of belt debris, even down below. And one of the other complaints was reverse was not, it really didn't have much of a reverse. And these use, a drive disc, that's that rubber disc right there, right in the center of your screen. And it runs off the flywheel in the front, the pulley, 
you can see where the paints wore off that's mostly where first and reverse is close to the center and as you get further out it gets into a taller gear almost all the way out to the very end it'll be like fifth gear well this was uh he had a rod replaced i think it's this rod right here probably broke it or bent it and this is your adjustment for where the position of that pulley is and of course neutral you should be almost right dead center of it and you know uh, reverse is this direction and first gear is this direction well if you put it in reverse it was sitting right dead center of the pulley so that's why it had no reverse well you would think that you could loosen these two nuts and just dial this like you would a, a tie rod end and the, the rod would get longer and shorter uh, I don't know why but for someone's uh, infinite uh, wisdom they decided that it does not work that way they're just, they're a constant thread you just only thing that happens if you loosen this up you just uh, take that and it just slides up and it slides down it never changes uh, dimension so I unbolted it up here and you have to spin the rod put it back together again see where it lines up and did that for about two or three times until we got it right in the center so that should be good but we still have to test it uh, sometimes what happens is you think you have it in a good alignment but when you go to put a load on it and the, the drive disc and the drive pulley touch each other it'll take the play that's in the system and shift it one way or another so until you actually put a load on it you may or may not have it so i'm gonna leave the belt be ah, yeah the belly pan off and uh, i'm gonna fire it up bring it down the floor make sure everything works okay before i put that on and button it up but we should be all right i have enough uh, preload on the spring this is what drives that disc into there and you should see the expansion of that spring and it's just kind of like an overload so the the disc and uh, the pulley touch each other and then they're after they touch this is your your over travel we should call it and you, you want like between a half inch and a three quarters of an inch on most machines of uh, preload or if you're looking at the handle you want it in a comfortable position where you can kind of grab it and let it go. So like you're, you know, you're, you're doing down your driveway and you want to back it off. You don't want to have to back the thing off all the way. You want to be able to, you know, just release it a little bit and then, you know, maybe make it go again where you still have the capacity of, of gripping it in one shot instead of having to do this every single time. I'm going to fire it up, make sure the transmission works okay. And uh, if we're good with that, I'm going to put it out one last time outside. We'll let it run a little bit and uh, make sure nothing decides to drip out of it. And that's all we're doing. It's not getting like the carb serviced and everything. It was just getting the, the oil leak fixed, the drive, and just check the gear oil in the front, which is grease, and that was fine. what I mean by it when it went reverse it didn't have enough snot to, to uh, move it when I grabbed the linkage you know, and I pulled up on it it still uh, went it did go in reverse at first I was thinking the drive disc wasn't catching so that's exactly what's happening the slop in the, the linkage is allowing it to go back into the center and not do anything so I got to turn it a little bit more and let it favor um, towards reverse a little bit more plus first gear it seemed like it was a little fast so I'm gonna go adjust that one last time so I already loosened this guy up on the top already. And I'm just getting ready to finish taking that off. And so I need to pull, this rod needs to get pulled more for reverse. So I want to tighten up even a little more. Let's go two turns. Put that back together. I'm going to try it again. See if that does it. It should. I can imagine how bad, I didn't test it before I took it apart, but I can imagine first gear must have been like <laughs> third gear. And you go 
gonna try that one more time, see what we get. It's better. Uh, first gear is still a little faster than reverse. This should be about the same. So I'm going to go one more turn and we're going to call it good. Well, I gotta clean the carburetor anyway because it seems like it probably has water in it. It's acting like, so just when you think you're done, you're not. All right, so I shut the fuel off and uh, what this flow pole has a little tickler right there. You can kind of drain some fuel out of it. So I have my white cup. Let's see if I can get that up inside there. And I just want to look at the fuel that's coming out see if it's got a the problem is it's going to want to run down the screwdriver Let's see <laughs> but the stuff that came out first it should have been the water if it had water in it and it could be a dirty carb too but Went in there. Let's see. Okay. Get you out. And... It doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna let that settle for a minute though. Sometimes when the, the machine's running and it vibrates, it will mix the fuel and water up pretty good. And then you let it sit for a minute. It'll go from cloudy to collecting on the bottom. Kind of like how you see the dirt's doing now, you know. So I'm gonna pull that float pole off anyway because there's an issue. There's an issue in there somehow. So let's see if we can sneak that out. So I pulled the bowl, and the bowl looked really clean actually. A little dot of something right there, but that's pretty much a spotless-looking setup. I don't know how we're doing in here with the fuel. Not seeing much in the way of. Uh, water in there so this is the jet it's a fixed jet meaning it's not adjustable the only thing I do notice I don't know if it'd be better without the magnifying glass or with Let's see if you can do it without I need a piece of white paper and focus can you guys see that a hole right there. There's a piece of like the, uh, it looks like a piece of the uh, gasket is up blocking the hole. That's the only thing I see uh, that can be any kind of issue. Not, not saying that that center is not plugged, you know, plugged. I don't know until I blow it out, but it seems like it's more the idle circuit is not working which is about a 50 50 whether it's going to recover on that carburetor to style that carburetor what happens is the carburetor uses the main circuit and the idle circuit when it's revved up and when it um should be the best way to explain it the the, the idle circuit is always putting fuel through and when the motor revs up, it's on the main circuit, it over revs, it starts backing off the main circuit. If it goes down to an idle, there's nothing there. So then it kind of drops right off. Then it goes full throttle again to try to recover. That's where that, that hunting kind of comes from. And a lot of times you can kind of tweak it by turning the choke off a little bit. 
uh, on a little bit and, you, and you're, you're riching up the mixture. But what happens is because there's no idle circuit, it's lean throughout the whole thing. And that's when you saw like the, the sparks and the, the, the exhaust getting hot. That's a good indication of running lean. Running lean means it doesn't have enough fuel for the air fuel mix. And when you do that, it, it runs at a hotter temperature. So uh, could be a bad carb. I'm gonna blow it out, put it back together and see if it gets any better. One thing I should have tried before I shut it down is brought the idle down and see if it idled. If it did not idle, then you definitely know there's no idle circuit. But I was uh, of the assumption that there was gonna be water in the fuel. That's what happens when you assume. Let me uh, go blow that out, put it back together, see what we get. So that may have been it. May have just had crap inside the jet that was causing it to do that, because it does idle. And uh, if it didn't idle, then you know obviously that circuit was uh, not working. But it seems to be. So uh, you know this machine is uh, one that had me kind of guessing the whole way through what I thought would it would be, ended up uh, just being different things. So uh, I think we're almost done with this. I'm probably gonna put it back outside. I'm gonna let it run. I'm open the door. Get some air in. Because it's, it's run for a while and it did hunt every time I kind of started it up till it warmed up a little bit. If it does it again, I'm going to give it a little bit of choke and see if it kind of cures itself. But uh, again, it still could have carburetor issues. More than likely it has carburetor issues. Um, especially with the carburetor being that clean, I was kind of uh, suspicious. Uh, anyway, like somebody was in there before and already cleaned it. So I'll call him up and, and see if he had a ongoing problem with it last year doing some hunting and you know, if, if he just kind of ran it like that or not. So that's it for this one probably. And again, I wanna thank all you guys for watching and uh, all the well wishes for uh, the holidays. I appreciate it and the same to all you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad that uh, everybody seems to be, well for the most part, seems to be enjoying uh, just hanging out in the garage wrenching with me. I never would have thought uh, it would have been so popular as what it is. But again, that guys, thanks. You know, it, uh, I guess if it's something you like, uh, people can, you know, it's not fake. It's, it's just, I like getting into what uh, makes stuff tick and I guess maybe hits a note with everybody too. So uh, again then, guys, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing. See you later.